Praise God. God is good all the time. God is good. And you know, I like that song because it reminds us that not only is God good, which He is, but uh, He's great. Amen? We serve a great God. Uh, not just a good God, but a great God, an all-powerful God. And uh, we're going to see God show up and show off and show out here tonight. Amen? Yes. So if you, have a, if you have a need tonight, uh, I would encourage you to, like Pastor Bob exhorted us to, press in. Amen? Amen. And, uh, and not uh, leave this place the same. That's certainly our prayer and uh, God's, uh, God's plan for you. So if you have a, a need, whatever that is, uh, I would encourage you uh, to just uh, just press into the presence of the Lord tonight. Has it been great here at River of Life this uh, this week already? Praise God for the Grace Fellowship uh, conferences in the spring and in the fall. And uh, I tell you what, um, how many of you were here Wednesday night and heard a, heard a new preacher named Pastor Bob Mark? Just a young preacher, young preacher. Uh, didn't he do a great job? I mean, talk about launchings. Go ahead. Do it. Uh, that stirred me up. Stirred to talk about the importance of knowing your anointing and walking in your authority. Walking in your anointing, walking in your authority. And uh, I tell you what, he was on fire. And uh, it got me. I was over here. I was about ready to jump up. And it got me stirred up. And I, I share with him after uh, the message that. Boy, my, the message that God put on my heart about three months ago for tonight is right in line with uh, uh, His message and really the vision for uh, for this conference. So, looking forward to, to sharing that. Also, want to give honor to uh, Pastor Mike and Pastor Rachel once again for hosting us and the entire River of Life uh, congregation. Thank you so much. For, uh, we always love coming over here. Thank you for allowing the tab band. Uh, Come over and, and uh, just serve you and to lead you into to God's presence. I, I'm a firm believer there's nothing like the presence of the Lord. Amen. Everything we're searching for, everything we're hungering after is found in the presence of God. If you got God, you got it all. Amen. That's all you need. So uh, I'm, I'm addicted. I'm addicted to the presence of God. I used to be addicted to some other stuff. Like some of you. Some of them used to be addicted to sleep. We're addicted to Jesus now, right? Yes, we we're addicted are. to the presence of God. And uh, I, when you're addicted, you notice something. Some of you know some things about addiction. Uh, you can't live without it. You got to have it not next week. You got to have it what? You got to have it right now, right here. And, and then when you're addicted, that's what that means. You, 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 and you're going to go. Until you get it, right? Well, that's what we're to be as Christ followers and Christians. We're to be addicted, passionate about the presence of God. And uh, I tell you what, the older I get, the more passionate I become about the presence of God. Well, hey, uh, again, thank you all for being here tonight. And it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful evening. And I want to share with you some exciting things uh, that's been happening over in Bloomington Normal, which is uh, where... I live, and uh, we're a pastor of a church called the Tabernacle. Uh, it's nicknamed the Tab, and it's a whole heck of a lot easier to spell. All right, so uh, uh, so we, we it, it, it's known by us and by most of, most people in our community as uh, as the Tab, and we uh, we had some uh, some wonderful uh, circumstances, turn of events happen about six to eight months ago. We were the last three years in the Crossroads Center, many of you have been over in our uh, church over there, renovated about a uh, 4,500 square foot space, and we were there for three years and uh, leasing the facility. And another church bought it, which were, were you know, we were happy for them, which is great. So we had to leave, you know, they weren't going to let us stay. So, uh, so, so we were uh, we were portable once again. We we. Uh, uh, looked at upwards of 30 different properties over the last six to eight months. And God, I mean, through a set of tremendous miracles and, and supernatural uh, events, uh, provided for us this place up right here. Um, 
I, on, uh, on West Hubby Avenue there in Normal. It's an 8,500 square foot facility. Praise God. And God gave us double for our trouble. God gave us double for our trouble. And uh, we're getting ready to move in uh, one week from this Sunday. So November 5th, uh, we're planning on moving in and uh, possessing the land. We've been in a Possess the Land campaign and a message series. And I tell you what, God is just... Uh, proving himself to us and to our to our young congregation uh, time and time and time again uh, that he is 100% behind this and uh, we look forward to having you all over. Once we get in, we'd love for you all to come over and maybe host a conference or something like that sometime. It's a, it's a, it's a ministry to us. We call our con told our congregation, it's just a tool. Buildings are just a tool. The building's not the goal, all right? The building is just a tool. To, to, to fulfill the goal. And we're going to be able to reach hundreds and we believe thousands of people uh, really quickly in the Bloomington Normal area through, uh, through, this, uh, through this new facility. So uh, we would give God a thanks for giving us a I'll just tell one testimony. We, I mean, things had, there was about 15 things that had to happen for this to, to, to be a reality. One of which was to get the zoning approved or changed through the city council. Now, I don't know how many of you have ever had to deal with city councils, but uh, um, God gave us favor. Amen. And uh, they came to us and they said, hey, we would like to have churches in, uh, in that M1 zone. And, and uh, it just... It, it just blew us away. I mean, the, the, the miracles that God has done for us. And uh, I believe God's going to do them for you. You know, here's the principle we've learned. What you make happen for God's house, God will make happen for your house. What you do for God, God will do for you. And uh, we've just been pouring ourselves and blessing God's house. And I'll tell you what, a uh, young man right over here has got a wonderful testimony about how he blessed God's house with a sacrificial financial offering. And God gave him a better job, better benefits, more money, doing the same job he's doing right now. How about that? Yeah. I mean, is that more money, more benefits? See, you bless God's house. God will bless your house. You take care of God's business, and God's going to take care of your business. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, hey, I have a, a wonderful... Uh, person I want to introduce to you here tonight. My wife is here. It's always great to have uh, Pastor Mindy here with us and, and uh, always grateful to have her uh, in the congregation. And uh, she's she's our children's pastor over there at the Taps. She doesn't always get to be in service, so it's great to have her here tonight. Well, the title of my message this evening is What You Got. What You Got. Now, I know for those of you that are English grammaticians, is that right? Grammaticians? That's, that's uh, poor English, but it's, it's a good title. All right? It's, a, it's, a, it's poor English, but it's a good title. And it's really going to, I believe, stick with you tonight and hopefully tomorrow in regards to really what the Holy Spirit is, uh, is wanting us to learn and really to receive and to be imparted. Uh, tonight by His Spirit. So, if you would, would you uh, just kind of uh, entertain me and look at the person sitting next to you and ask them that question. What you got? What, what you, you got? got? What, what you got? got? What you got? <laughs> Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, if you have your Bibles, uh, or you have a, have a phone, or an iPad, or an iPod, or anything like that, turn them on, and uh, go to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, we're going to read the first 10 verses of Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10, a wonderful narrative. Oh, I love the book of Acts. Amen. Yeah. Acts chapter 3, 1 through 10, if you don't have a Bible, that's fine. Pastor Mike's got a whole bunch of them down there. We'd love to sow those into you. And, uh, or you can just watch it and read along with me up on the screen. So, Acts chapter 3, 1 through 10. Let's hear the Word of God. Are you ready for the Word of God? Amen. Amen. Here it is. Now, Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. That would be 3 o'clock in the afternoon. 
And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. So, so catch this, something, <coughs> or I should say someone broken, laid at the gate of something beautiful. There he was, laying at the gate called Beautiful, to ask for alms from those who entered the temple. He soon hearing John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said to the man, Look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, here it is, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And Peter took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were all filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. What you got? What you got? As human beings, we are powerless, or we could say bankrupt. To give to anyone something until we first possess it. Even if we want to give something to someone from the depths of our hearts. If you don't have it, you can't give it. And I believe, um, like Pastor Mike and Pastor Bob, probably the vast majority of Christians living today have no clue at what they have through faith in Jesus Christ. And so there's needs all oh, by the thousands in this community, by the millions in the world, that go unmet, not because some things haven't been provided, but because we as the church of Jesus Christ don't know our anointing and don't know our authority. We don't know what we have. Even though we possess it. Even though we possess it. We don't know what we have. And until we know what we have. We can't give it away. In Acts chapter 3. Peter and John. Were going up to the temple to pray. When they encountered. A broken beggar. Right? He was broken physically. He was broken emotionally. He was broken relationally. He was probably broken mentally. He certainly was broken financially, right? I mean, he was, remember the text, he was broken from birth. He had never walked a day in his life. For the most part, he didn't even have shoes, didn't need them, right? Uh, he was broken spiritually, no doubt. Then he was, he was at the gate of the temple, right? At the gate called Beautiful, there were 12 different gates, different gates had different names. And he's, here he is, someone broken, laid at the gate called Beautiful. Someone broken, laying before something beautiful. And uh, Peter and John stop. Here they're going up to the temple, right? To pray. And all of a sudden, this, this guy, maybe he had a little tin cup, you know. Alms, alms. And he's probably sitting crisscross applesauce. Mm -hmm. Cut the guy's head down, right? Because he's broken. He's ashamed. He is, he's never worked a job. He's never earned a wage. He's broken. He can't walk. He can't do anything. And so he's there, what? Begging for coins so that he can have something probably to eat that night. This man was lowered to a life of begging when Peter and John stopped to have a conversation with him. 
And the man, no doubt, expected to receive what? Some money, some, some, some pennies, some quarters, some nickels. But Peter and John, I love this, they knew what they had. <laughs> and they were going to give the man something way more than just some financial change. They were going to give him what? A spiritual change. They were going to give him an emotional change. They were going to give him a mental change. They were going to give him a relational change. They were going to give him a physical change. And when you get all those changes, guess what happens? Then you, then you go to work. Then he, and I believe, if the truth be told, we found this guy out, he probably got the job. His finances changed. He started prospering, right? I, I love what... Uh, I love what Peter said to this broken beggar. Look at it with me. Acts 3, 6 and 8. Acts 3, 6 and 8. Here it is. Silver and gold I do not have. Now, a lot of religious people will say, well, see there, see there, Pastor Tim, that just tells you God wants us poor. No, 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 no. They had money. They were business owners. Remember that? Before they hopped on Team Jesus for the last three years. Um, Maybe they, maybe they just got done eating at the buffet. We don't know. Maybe they gave their money on the way to the temple to someone else. It, it didn't mean they didn't have money. It just didn't mean they didn't have money in it on them. I don't know about you, but I don't carry cash anymore. If somebody said, can I have a dollar? Well, I got some dollars, but I don't have a dollar. Does that make sense? There you go. There are my pockets. Yeah, yeah. I'm married, right? To a woman. She got some. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. But really, have you ever heard that? Religion takes this. See, Peter and John, they didn't have any money. They're just poor preachers. No, 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 no. They had money. They just didn't have money on their person. Silver and gold I do not have, Peter said, but what I do have. I love this. I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, this is the broken man, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple, the presence of God, with them. And he was walking and he was leaping. And I guess he was skipping, right? Probably doing a dance, right? Praising God. I, I hope to say so. I mean, my man, you've been broken from birth and you never walked and all of a sudden your limbs straightened out and you got, and here's, that's, that's a miracle in itself, just to get the limbs straightened out. But now you've got to have strength enough to carry, right? Strength, muscle. God put the muscle on it and fixed the bones. Cartilage, the whole thing. We got a nurse up here. She knows what I'm talking about. God did it. And when did he do it? Immediately. Right then, right there. I love this. What happened? Well, here's what happened. Revival. We're praying for revival, aren't we? We're going to have a revival in January. You're not going to want to miss it. Yeah. Uh, just like something broken was laid to something beautiful, something hot's getting ready to happen when something's cold. Right? January is cold out here, but it's going to get hot in your heart. Revival fires are going to burn. Amen. Revival came to this broken beggar, and watch this now, and to many others who knew him. Because he'd been laid there for weeks, months, maybe years. We don't know. We don't know how long, he, how many years he's been laid there. Maybe his whole life. And people knew him. People know that. Probably you know, felt sorry for him and gave him a quarter. As they went in up to worship, right? So they recognized this broken man. And revival came to the man, but revival came also to those that knew him. Why? Because Peter and John knew what they had received from God. And watch this now. And were willing to give it to him. Yes. Yeah. You know, the Bible says we freely receive and we what? We freely give. We freely receive and we freely give. But here's the point, and everybody's like, oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I'm receiving, you know, bless me. Uh, but when you receive, guess what? You got to give. Right. Yeah. You don't just be the receiver now. I know a whole lot of people, you know, come to church to receive. 
Right? That's great. We're here. Praise God. The church is here to serve you. Amen. But there's a time for you to give back to your church. Come on now. You don't just receive from the house of God. You gotta what? You gotta give. Give back to the house of God. I like what JFK said. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Well, let me say this, church. Ask not what your church can do for you. How about come up to the man of God, woman of God, and say, hey, what can I do for my church? Come on now. Because you've been blessed by the ministry, then you return the blessing to the ministry. You've received from the ministry, what do you do? You give back to the ministry. Amen. Amen. Well, I tell you what, if you don't, it's a lopsided relationship. Yeah, we are receivers, amen, but we're givers. Yeah. Peter and John received, but they didn't keep it to themselves. They said, boy, we've been blessed to be a blessing. Yes. We've been healed to heal. We've been encouraged to encourage. We've been saved to save. We've been delivered to deliver. We've been prospered to prosper. Amen. That's how this thing works. So Peter and John knew what they received, and they were willing to give it to this man with a really big need. Now, Peter and John, one thing they didn't do was make excuses when they encountered this, you know, all intents and purposes and observations. Man, this was a, this was a big deal. I mean, this wasn't just, you know, uh, you know, I need some soap. Or I need a Coke, right? Or I need, a, I need, I need some ham and turkey. And this guy was crippled. I mean, crippled from birth. Yes. Yes. This wasn't a small ministry need. This was a huge ministry need, amen? One in which they didn't offer excuses, something like this. Well, you know, uh, we knew Jesus and man, gee, I really, my friend, I really wish, you know, I really wish Jesus were still here because if Jesus were here, he would heal you. But you know, um, um, we're just Peter and John. If, you, if, you, if James was here, he could heal you. Make an excuse for you. Well, you know, the days of healing are over. Jesus is gone. Right? You heard that one? Yeah. God used to do miracles, but God doesn't do miracles today. And he didn't make excuses. But isn't it interesting how we make excuses today when we meet, when we meet especially the big ministry needs? Don't we make excuses for God? I mean, the little things we can kind of, well, yeah, all right. Got a headache. What about the brain tumor? What about the breast cancer? Come on in. I'm not talking about your hangman. I'm talking about big, major ministry needs. We kind of we sugarcoat the, the, the condition, don't we? Say, well, you know how God is. He, he heals one and he doesn't heal the other. Well, he hears some prayers, but he doesn't hear all prayers. They didn't make excuses. But don't we make excuses? I'm talking about the church. I'm talking about the church of Jesus Christ. They didn't make excuses. They didn't back down. They walked, they walked right up to this man. And I think his head was down. Right? Sitting there all day, probably in the Jerusalem sun, right? Getting sunburned. They didn't make excuses. Rather, Peter and John, what they do? They stepped up, they stepped out, and they provided what the man really needed out of what they had been given through Jesus Christ. They knew what they had. And it's not until you and I as Christians today know what we have been given through Jesus that we can walk, that we can give it away. And we can meet ministry needs. Watch this now. The meeting of that ministry need birthed and sparked revival. That's what happened. This miracle brought a revival not just to this one man, but probably to his family, Maybe he had some brothers and sisters, his mom and dad, those that knew him. You know, you read the rest of the account, 9 and 10, that there was revival that came about. And I would dare say, you know what? How many times we've been praying for revival, but yet God might put a ministry need in front of us and we kind of do one of these. Right? We 
kind of, I'm going to walk over here because, you know, I have you know, You know how God is. Sometimes he does and sometimes he doesn't. No, 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 no. God does it all the time. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, I mean, it's right now tonight, you're a beacon, and tomorrow. See, you and I don't have a need that God can't meet, whether it's today or whether it's tomorrow. So it's time. I, I just feel burdened tonight. I feel stirred up tonight to share with you what you already have. See, here's the thing. We don't even have to pray for this stuff. It's going to amaze you. You've already got it. It would be as crazy as Pastor Mike asking God for a blue tie. He's already got it. Right? It, it, it would be, it would be as, as, as ridiculous as asking uh, uh, Pastor Bob for a $4,000 ink pen. He's already got it. <laughs> I mean, this man's got some ink pens. <laughs> he possesses it, right? You don't need to pray about it. Well, God, no. God says, I already gave it to you. I'm, how many unanswered prayers? Think about that. This isn't my message. This is good. Get ready. How many times have we prayed a prayer and God's probably sick and, and, and doesn't answer it? He doesn't answer our prayer. Why? Because He already answered it. He's already given it to us. But we just have neglected or neglected to receive it or we just haven't been enlightened or educated to what we've been given. It's kind of like an heir. You know, let's say your mom and dad die and, 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 and you know, you get the last will and testament and you're an heir and, and, and you don't know what's in the will even though you're the heir to the estate. You got it all. But if you don't know what the will is, you can't what? You can't take possession of it, walk in it, and enjoy it. Hallelujah. Now, here's the good thing. I'm going to share with you five things that God has given every single one of us by faith in Jesus Christ. If you're a Christian, you have these things already. And I'm not talking about the pastors. I'm talking about Christians. Every single one of us. I'm, this message is for you and it's for me. Through faith in Jesus Christ. Are you ready for this? All right, look at your neighbor one more time and ask them what you got. What you got? What you got? Here it is. Possession number one. Write this down if you're taking notes. That way you know what you have. Amen. Possession number one. Here it is. We've been talking a lot about it here. The promises of God. You have the promises of God right here. The B I B L E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. We have the promises of God. Hallelujah. I love what Deuteronomy 29 and 29 says. The secret things belong to the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed. And what's happening tonight? Let me tell you what's happening now. You're getting some revelation. What's happening this week? At this conference is you're getting some revelation. Revelation is like pulling back the curtain. It's already there. It's just behind the curtain. You just pull back and go, oh, wow. So the secret things belong to God. But the revealed things belong to who? Come on now. Belong to who? Belong to us. Not just Pastor Bob, Pastor Tim, Pastor Mike. Belong to all of us. Isn't this good? And, oh boy, Ooh, can you read the screen? Those things are revealed belong to us, somebody say us, us. and to our children. Hallelujah. <laughs> Not just me and Pastor Mindy here, but to hope. To, your, to you and your children, the promises of God I'm talking about. Now, how long? Well, you know, on Sunday mornings. Well, you know, every twice a year at the Grace Fellowship conferences. Oh, sweetheart. Forever. That's a mighty long time. Yes. They belong to, <laughs> come on now. The promises of God belong to us and to our children forever that we, here it is, that we may do. Somebody say do. 
Someone say do. Yeah. All the words of what? Of the law. Of the word of God. Hallelujah. God has given us his word. Why? So that we might know what's his will and we might do what his will is. Amen. So if you, that's why you got to read the Bible. That's why you can't miss a day. You got to get in the word of God till the word of God gets in you, brother. Come on now. You got to get in the word so the word gets in you. Why? Because this is all revealed. It's all right there on your page. This is, think about this. There's two testaments. The Old Testament and the New Testament. What are testaments? The will. It's the testimony. It's the will of what God has given his children. You and I are sons and daughters of God. This is the will that our father said, hey, if you can find it in here, it's yours. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man, that gets me excited. So you know what? I go digging in the will. What? Is, it, is healing in here? Yeah, healing's in here. Is joy in here? Joy's in here. Deliverance in here? Deliverance in here. Amen. Come on now. Yeah. Salvation in here? Yeah, salvation's in here. Right? All this thing, it's in the will. But how many people will die and go to hell? Not because they couldn't possess salvation. They just didn't read the will. And what? Accept it. Receive it. See, the things that are received, revealed, are ours. Until you get salvation revealed to you, you're going to go to hell. See, all's been saved. Jesus' blood has been shed for all. Yes. It's, he's not going back to the cross. It's over. It's finished. He said, it. it's finished. The debt's been paid for everybody. But not everybody's going to go to heaven. Why? Because they don't know it. They don't know they can be saved. Are you with me? Just like everyone can be healed. But they don't know they can be healed until it's revealed to them. Are you with me? You can be happy. You can. It's in the book. Amen. Hallelujah. This is just my first scripture. i got to hurry up. All right, Joshua 21, 45. I love this. Not a word. Not a word. Failed of any good thing which the Lord has spoken to the house of Israel. All came to pass. So whatever God spoke in the word, it's going to come to pass. Isn't that great? Now here's the thing. Here's the problem, microwave generation. We want it yesterday. Come on now. I like microwaves. Oh, I do. I, do. I can work a microwave. <laughs> <laughs> and, that's it. And, and within seconds, come on now. It's ready. And that, but that's not how God works. I mean, don't don't get hung up on, you know, well, I prayed and I found it in the word and it didn't happen yesterday. Give God some time. We're a microwave generation serving a crock pot God. <laughs> Our building is a perfect example of that. Our building is a perfect example of that. We came really close to moving into some other buildings. God had to slam the door on our faces because we, we about got out of the will of God. It took about, what, six to eight months before this thing to come. Are you with me? But boy, now we, we're looking at this. Woo, it was worth it. Hallelujah. It meets our needs today and uh, our vision for the future. That's what, that's what the Word of God tells us. Matthew 24, 35, heaven and earth will pass away. These are the words of Jesus. But my words will what? <laughs> Never pass away. Amen? The word of God's eternal. Second Corinthians 1, 20, all the promises of God in him are, oh, this is good. Yes. Somebody say yes. yes. And in him, amen. And amen means so be it. To the glory of God through us. So here's the here's the first one, real quick again. If you can find it in the Word, you don't ever have to ask or pray the prayer. Well, God, is it your will? If it be thy will, God, if it's God is the Father, us. This... If it's in the book, it's yes, and it's amen. For what? For the glory of God. Now, don't forget to give Him the glory. 
Amen? When God heals you, saves you, delivers you, sets you free, prospers you, it's all in the book. Don't forget to say glory to God. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Right? Because it's Him that's doing the work. But if you can find it in the Word, it shows. The first thing we've been given, saints, is the Word of God. So get in the Word of God. Get in the Word every single day. Every single day. Now, if you're new to this, let me encourage you. Let me give you some direction here, all right? You don't read from the beginning. You will make it through the book of Genesis, and that's about it. All right? You don't read the Bible like a book. Let's start you about what? Matthew or John. That would be a good. That's in the New Testament. Read the whole New Testament. All right? If you don't know what the New Testament is, that's all right. You've got a pastor. Come and ask the pastor. Pastor uh, Mike or Pastor Rachel, Pastor Bob, uh, Pastor Debbie will help you. Right? you got to get in the Word of God. Get a daily devotional. Get in the Word of God every day. And God will what? God will begin revealing things to you that He wants you to have. The first thing we've been given, saints, is the Word of God. The promises of God. You know, when, when, uh, when, when something's a promise, you know, we say, I promise you this. I'll do it. That's what God's saying. If you'll just put me in remembrance, if you'll just come to me, I promise you, I'll get it to you. All right, possession number two. Here we go. Possession number two. Are you getting blessed tonight? Are you learning something? Are you encouraged in the faith? You've got this. It's already, some of you are holding this thing in your lap. Or on your phone. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Number two, possession number two is the presence of God. The presence of God. If you're a Christian, you have the presence of God. Psalm 5111. I love this. King David said, do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. And you know why he prayed that prayer? Because the Holy Spirit was with him. He possessed the Holy Spirit. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. And when you and I become Christians, guess what comes into our hearts? Guess who, I should say, comes in to take residence within us is the Holy Spirit. John 20, look at this. John 20, 21, 22. Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. With that, he breathed on the disciples and said, here it is, receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, look at your neighbor. Tell them that. Tell them that. Receive the Holy Spirit. So if you received it, then what, what, is, what does that mean? You possess it. You have it. You own it. It's yours. Hallelujah. Acts 2.38. Peter replied on the day of Pentecost, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. So, the only way to receive the Holy Spirit, by the way, is this. You have to be saved. You have to repent of your sins. You have to ask God to forgive you. Cleanse your heart from all your transgressions and iniquity, because the Holy Spirit will not come into a defiled heart. That's what Peter's saying. Repent, be baptized, in the name of Jesus Christ, have your sins forgiven, and watch what happens. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. All right, now, my church knows this, but let me say this. God the Father gave two gifts uh, in human history. The first gift he gave to the world, Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Jesus Christ is for the world. Jesus Christ is the gift that God wants everyone in the world to receive. Amen? Amen. Amen. But not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, God the Father gave the Holy Spirit to the church. To only those who receive Jesus. Why? Because the unforgivable sin is blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And the sinner will blaspheme the Holy Spirit and get his soul out. Isn't that interesting? Jesus is given to the world but the Holy Spirit is given to the church. So if you're a believer in Jesus, if you receive Jesus, then guess what? Then you need to receive the second gift. The gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen? The, the Father wants you to receive both gifts. The gift of salvation through Jesus and the gift of what? The gift of His presence through the Holy Spirit. 
First Corinthians six nineteen speaks to this point. Oh, this is good. Ask your neighbor again, what you got? What you got? What you got? Here it is. The Apostle Paul asked the question. Here it is. Do you not know? See, there it is. Don't you know? I mean, this is a rhetorical question. They should know. He says, don't you know what you got? Right? Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is what? Who is in you, whom you received from the Father, from God. See? The Holy Spirit is in you. You have the presence of God living in you when you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You have the presence of God. You have the presence of God. You just need to what? We need to learn to cooperate with the presence of God, the Holy Spirit. So His presence, what? Increases and so fills our heart and overflows our lives that what? That His anointing, because the presence of God, by the way, is the anointing. That's all it is. Pastor Bob told us that on, on Wednesday night. The presence of God is the anointing. It's the it's the it's the oil, if I can say that, right? Yeah. Upon our lives. And every Christian has this. Every Christian has this. Not the world, but every Christian has the presence of God. Hallelujah. Alright, possession number three. Possession number three. The power of God. Oh, this is good. Possession number one is the promises of God. Possession number two, the presence of God. Possession number three, the power of God. Psalm 68, 34, and 35 says these words. Proclaim the power of God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose power is in the heavens. You, God, are awesome in your sanctuary. The God of Israel gives, here it is, gives power and gives strength or might. To who? To, 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 the, to the elect of God. To the pastor. To the apostle. To the Christian uh, vocalist. It's the double ones. No. Isn't this good? Come on now, Christian. Who feels like everybody else is passing in. No, this is for you. The power of God's for you. You are awesome in your sanctuary. The God of Israel gives power and strength to his people. And I love this. The psalmist couldn't help himself. Praise be to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. We've got power. Somebody say power. 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 And I'm not talking about a little double-A battery power. We're talking about the power plant of God. Where? In us. In us. We have it. God, give me the power of God. He says, you go over, over heaven, sapphire, seal, and gate. I already gave it to you. <laughs> God, give me your presence. I already got it. God, tell me your will for my life. <laughs> I already gave it to you. <laughs> Are you seeing this thing? See, we don't know what we have. That's what heaven and, and God just kind of sitting up there. Man, he's giving us a lot. Yeah. Yeah. If, if nothing else but the promises of God is good enough. That's right. The word of God. But it doesn't stop there. The word of God, the promises of God, the presence of God, the power of God. Daniel 2, look at this. Oh, I love this. The God of heaven has given you, talking about the church, talking about Christians. People of God, giving you dominion, which is authority, and power, and might, and glory. <laughs> I mean, we've been given a lot. We've been given authority and power in the earth, and, and strength to what? To see some things happen. See, now, now do you understand why Peter and how Peter and John walked up to this man with the impossible situation and said, get up? Are you seeing how they did it? Because they knew this. They knew they had the power. They knew they had the presence. They knew they had the, the yes and amen of God. Are you seeing it? Yeah. Well, let's look at a couple more. This is a big one. I love this one. I confess this all the time over my life. Luke 9, 1 and 2. When Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to 
drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to what? And to heal the sick. Well, who were the twelve? Who were, that was Peter and John. Are you with me? See, they knew what they received. They knew what they possessed, Pastor David. They understood this. So they didn't have to go and say, well, oh, I wish we could help you out, son. No, 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 they did. See, they, when you know what you have, you know what you did? Walk with confidence. I got it. I got, don't need to ask for it. I don't need to wonder about it. I even, don't even need to pray about it. Pastor Bob doesn't have to pray about his pen. He's got it. Well, Satan, child of God, we got the power of God. We've got the power of God. Now, you can ask God to increase it on your life. Absolutely. But you have it. Acts 1 verse 8. Jesus said, you will. I like the King James. It says shall, right? You shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes on you, see the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, is the power of God. And you will be my what? Witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. Acts 4.33. With great power. Someone say great power. Great power. Great power. I'm ready for some great power to be released in here tonight. Amen. With great power, the apostles continue to testify to the resurrection of Lord Jesus. And here it is again. And God's grace was powerfully at work in them all. Hallelujah. In them all. Say all. All, all right. Brother Jim, what does all mean? All means all. All means all. That doesn't mean 99 and you get left out, sister. You're, you're included in the all. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You got the power. Bum, bum, bum. You got the power. <laughs> yeah. We got it. Now, what are we supposed to do with it? We freely received the power. We didn't do anything to, to earn it. God gave us the premises of God. God gave us the presence of God. God gave us the power of God. Freely we received. Freely we give. Yeah. <laughs> and revival. Revival's a state of fires are sparked when the power of God's released. That's what happened to this young man sitting at the gate called Beautiful. Great power was released into his life. We've got the power, and it's for all, all of us, all of us. All right, possession number four. Write this down. Possession number four is the protection of God. Oh, hallelujah. It's yours through faith in Jesus Christ. Psalm 32, 7 says, you, talking about God, are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs. Of deliverance. See, as a Christian, you have supernatural protection. The day you become a son and daughter of God. Angels are released. We talk about guardian, a guardian angel. Well, you know, you want one, that's fine. I want a whole legion. I mean, I need you know, <laughs> angels. Yeah. Angels guarding us, protecting us. Proverbs 2, verse 8. It says, God guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. See, here's the thing. You say faithful, protection's yours. It's when we get, when we get back sudden, it's when we rebel, it's when we get out from underneath the protection, the presence, the power of God that the devil can have his way. That's why we got to stay connected to church. Amen? We got to stay, we got to stay on our knees in prayer. We got to stay in the Word. We got to stay what this, what this verse says. Faithful. Who does God protect? His faithful ones. What that means is that He doesn't protect His unfaithful ones. Amen. Come on now. I know and you know too, too many people have died prematurely. Tragically. What happened? We look and we say, what happened? Well, that's between them and God. We, you know, but hey, 
There's supernatural protection, amen, that we have. It's a possession when we stay faithful to God. Saint, stay faithful to the Lord. Stay faithful to the Lord. The, the, the world doesn't have anything for you anyway. Come on now. It, the, there's nothing out there that you want and certainly nothing out there that you need. It's all right in the kingdom of God. Amen. All the good stuff's in the kingdom. Hallelujah. All right, 2 Thessalonians 3.3. 3. The Lord, here it is, is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. There is an evil one. Amen. There is someone out here, Jesus said, who has come to steal, kill, and to destroy your life. I mean, you are a marked enemy of the kingdom of darkness when you enter into the kingdom of light. Come on now. That's spiritual warfare. Whether you believe in that thing or not, it's real. I'm telling you it's real. Some of us know it's real. We've seen too much. But the Lord's faithful. Amen. Don't, don't, don't feel the darkness when you got the light. All you got to do, you know, when, when the dark, just go over to, to the wall, turn on the light. The darkness, what? Disappears and dissipates. All you got to do is shine the light. Just shine the light. Start praising God. See what happens to the devil. Boy, he flees. Start confessing the word. He goes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Start quoting the word of God and he'll flee. He'll protect you from the evil one. 1 Peter 1 5. Through faith, we are shielded. There it is. Shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. I believe these are the last days. I believe this is the final generation that's going to usher in the, the, the kingdom of God. The coming of the Lord. And we are what? We need to be and we are shielded by God's power. If you have, I mean, if you, and you don't really have to hold a lot going on in the world today. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. That America is under spiritual attack. Our Christian values in this country are under spiritual attack. Pastors are under spiritual attack. Christians are under spiritual attack. Just try living for the Lord today and not get attacked. Whether you're a student, whether you're a nurse, I mean, you just try to live for God and, and you're going to get attacked. But here's the good thing. We have a shield. Amen. <laughs> We're shielded. There's a fortress of what? Protection around us. And here's what the enemy's trying to get us to do. Let me just kind of just put the bail on, on the dumb devil. He's trying to get us to fear. That's all he is. He's trying to make us afraid so we'll shut up. You ever notice that? See, they're trying to take our voice. They take our voice. They take our what? They take our power because where the word of the king is, there's power. See, you, 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 you can say anything you want to. Isn't that interesting? We live in a tolerant society. You're tolerant of everybody but a Christian. Come on now. I mean, you can say some silly stuff. You can say it like we want to say. You can say some stupid stuff. And it would be, oh, that's just great. That's just, oh, that's wonderful. But say Jesus is Lord. Say the Bible's true. And you know what will happen? All the devils will go to manifest. <laughs> It's unbelievable. That's what's happening in America today. And, and the devil's trying to push us back. Well, saints, here's the thing. The church of Jesus Christ had better stop walking back and start what? Start walking forward and taking authority because who's who has dominion? We have dominion. Not them. We have dominion. The devil is a thief and a robber. What do thieves and robbers do? They take what's not theirs. They rob from you and from me what is not rightfully theirs. That's what a thief and a robber. A thief comes into your house and takes your couch. It's not their couch. It's your couch. Well, the devil's a thief and a robber. Well, if someone came into your house and was going to take your couch, what would you do? Well, just kind of stand there silently. Gotta be tolerant in this tolerant society. We have to be accepting now, Pastor Tim, of all people. 
Are these the lies that the devil's telling us? I mean, it's all over the news, by the way. No, 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 no. We have dominion. We have power. We have authority in the earth. Not the devil and not the kingdom of darkness. He's an ex-employee of heaven. Come on now. He's an ex-employee of heaven. He's condemned already. He's a loser. That's what the devil is. He's a loser. But you know what? He's still running around causing chaos. Watch this now. Oh, this is good. Hold on. I just heard it. Causing chaos, even in the lives of Christians who don't know what they have. What you got? What you got? What you got? See, the devil can rob you of your joy, your peace, your hope, the power of God, your anointing. He can take it off if you don't know that you've got it. He can rob you of your health if you don't know that healing is yours. Amen. He can rob you, we sang it tonight, of your freedom. We're free, amen? In Jesus Christ, we are free. The shackles have been severed from our wrists. We're no longer slaves. We're sons and daughters of the Most High God. Amen? That's who you are. Amen. Hallelujah. And we don't, we're not afraid of the devil. Here's the reality. The devil's afraid of us. He is. All you have to do is step up to him. I'm telling you, grab the little sloth feet by the horns. <laughs> kick him out of your life. Kick him out of your house. Kick him out of your marriage. Kick him out of your kid's life. Come on now. You tell him what to do. You don't ask him. Because thieves don't go. Well, would, would you leave that house? <laughs> no. No. You have to grab the thief by the nap of the neck. And drag him out of your house. Come on now. The kingdom of God suffers violence. And the violent take the kingdom of God by force. Amen? I mean, you've got to get mad at the devil. You get mad at him and he'll, he'll, he'll tuck his little tail and run. Yeah. And then he'll know what, you know what, well, we, we can't go back to that house. There's a. There's a Holy Ghost man and woman of God there. They know. Amen. 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 They'll know not to mess with you. Right. Hallelujah. My last point. Possession number five. What you got? What you got, Christian? Boy, we got a lot, don't we? I'm talking about you. You. Me. It's us. We've been given these things. Possession number five. The prosperity of God. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. The blessing of God, the prosperity of God is ours through faith in Jesus Christ. I tell you what, there's, there's so many scriptures. I'm only going to give you a, a few. And then we're going to close. Deuteronomy 111. Look at this with me. May the Lord, the God of your fathers, increase you a thousand times and bless you As he promised. Boy, I'll tell you what, that's the only one we had, that's all we need. How many of you could stand to be increased a thousandfold? Take your salary and multiply it by a thousand. Take your joy and multiply it by a thousand. Take your peace and multiply it by a thousand. See, it doesn't say what, what, what area. We, we limit it to finances. I think finances are included in this thing. But, but may the Lord God increase you a thousand times. How about, how about you know, take the size of your church and multiply by a thousand. Come on now. It's going to happen. I'm telling you it's going to happen. It is. I'm telling you, these stadiums, I believe with all my heart, are being built for the kingdom of God to fill them. Amen. Our churches are going to be way too small. Oh, yeah. It is. Because God wants to. This is the will of God. Remember, it's in there. It says, Amen. Yes. Is this in there? Amen. Yeah, it is. Deuteronomy is in there. Deuteronomy will. May the Lord, the God of your fathers, increase you a thousand times over and bless you just as He promised. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Amen. So be it unto all of us in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy 5 33. Walk in obedience to all the Lord your God has commanded you, 
so you may live and prosper and prolong your days in the land. Here, oh, this is good. In the land you will possess. We're going to possess the land. Amen. <laughs> Amen. How do we, watch this now, how do we live long lives and prosper? And by the way, if you're going to live a long life, you want to be, you want to live a long prosperous life. Amen. I know a whole lot of people that are living long lives and they're poor. Oh, there's nothing worse than living a long life and being poor. But you're not poor no more. Why? Because the Word of God said you're prosperous. Prosperity is yours. It's ours. Why? Because we're king's kids. Your father is the king. Hey, amen. Pastor Bob said it Wednesday night. We're royalty. Revelation. What was that? Revelation. Uh, 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 wait, it's in Revelation. Amen. <laughs> we're king's kids. Amen. We are. Like he said, man, if we really could see who we are, we're Captain America. We're, we're superheroes. Amen. Boy, I'll tell you what. And little old sloth food in Revelation, you know, when he gets ready to get thrown down into the abyss, you know what they say, my name is this the guy? This dude, this little squirt <laughs> is the one that deceived the nations. I mean, that's the one. I mean, he's a he just a little tiny. A little tiny. But he makes us think that he's this giant. He's not. We're the giants. We're the king's kids. We're the ones with the power and the dominion and the authority and the anointing, the presence of God. Amen? Yeah. Not him. It's us. Deuteronomy 8, 17 and 18. Now, after God blesses you, people, now be careful. Here we go. After you begin prospering, after you, you don't get that thousand fold, you may say to yourself, here it is, oh, my power, my strength of my hands has produced this wealth for me. No, 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 no. Right? Too many Christians have done that, right? Too many people have done that. God's blessed them. God's prospered them because it was His will to bless and prosper them. And then they got what? They got into pride and they thought it was their intellect. They thought it was their ability, their education, their smarts. And, and it's not. It's God. Amen? Amen. So he says, now you might think it's your power and strength and the work of your hands that produce this wealth for you. But remember the Lord your God. For it is He who gives you, somebody say me. Gives you the ability, here it is, and power to produce wealth. Now, what is wealth? Wealth is having more than what you need. Provision is meeting the need. Wealth is above and beyond what you need. Now, my wife and I, she's here. We're not farmers by any stretch of that. We got a little garden. And we've got some, uh, I think they're vegetables, right? They're big, yeah, they're vegetables in that garden. And we've got three tomato plants. Have you ever grown tomatoes? Yeah. We like tomatoes, so we got, we got some tomato plants. And, uh, you know, every year it happens to us. We get excited about the tomatoes. And for about a week, maybe ten days, we're eating tomatoes after tomatoes after tomatoes. And then we're sick of tomatoes. <laughs> And then, oh man, we had a fill of tomatoes. And then we look out the backyard at the garden and, oh my God, look at all those tomatoes. There's 20 or 30 more on the vine. So what do you do? We go out and we pick the tomatoes and then we bring them to church or we give them to our neighbor and we say, would you like a tomato? Please take a tomato. <laughs> That's wealth. That's wealth. That's what God wants to bring us into, people. Not just having your tummy filled, which praise God for that. But for you to be so wealthy, you go up to people who have a need and say, hey, I got more than I need. Would you, would you like it here? Please take it. Yeah. Now here's the thing with the with the law of sowing and reaping. This is this is where it gets crazy. The more you give, the more it returns to you, pressed 
become shaken together, running over, will it be poured back into your lap. So the more we give tonight, they just keep going. And it's, it's, it's the law, right? See, this is exciting. This is exciting. So whatever God brings, when God brings you in this world, don't think it was you, sweetheart. It was God to bless you, yes, to meet your needs, to provide more than, more than enough. But don't you build bigger barns now. Don't you go hoarding the blessing. You and I, saint of God, please listen to this. You and I are prosperous to prosper. You and I are blessed to be a blessing. Amen? You and I are encouraged to encourage. Don't keep the encouragement of God to yourself. Come on now. You, whatever you receive, we're to, we're to give freely. That's the principle of wealth. And the more you do it, the more you get it back. And the more you get it. And then it's, 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 it's this. Yeah. So you look for opportunities to what? To, to give. Why does God give us wealth more than what we need? Here it is. To confirm and establish his covenant. <laughs> See, God does it to show off. God's a show off. He is. He really is. He likes to show up and show off. And to confirm everything in here. He does it. To where you and I just go, oh my gosh. Glory be to God forever. Yeah. Yeah. That's why he does it. To confirm and establish his covenant, which he swore. Uh-oh. You know God cussed. God swore. To your forefathers as it is today. He said this, I swear. You know he swear on himself. I swear upon myself because there's no higher than God. I'll do exactly what I said I'll do. Isn't that good? I'll bless you just like I said I'll bless you. I'll heal you just like I said I'll heal you. I'll save you just like I said I'll save you. I'll prosper you just like I said I'll prosper you. So he gets all the glory. <laughs> and you want to know something? This, this is going to trip your fuse. You ready for this? Deuteronomy 28.63. This blows the whole poverty mentality in the church out of the water. It pleased the Lord to make you poor as a church mouse. Did I read that wrong? I better look up on the screen here. It pleased the Lord to make you prosper and increase in number. See, it pleases God to prosper you, to bless you. Just like a parent wants to bless and prosper their child. It pleases us. It, amen? Come on now. If you're a parent, you know what I'm talking about. You want your children blessed. You want your children prosperous. You want your children happy and healed. Well, how much more does the Lord of Heaven want that? See, it pleases God to make us prosper, to bless us as His children. Deuteronomy 29, 9, as I close. Carefully follow the terms of this. Here it is again. It comes back to the promises. The covenant. Why do we need to follow the, the terms of the covenant? So we may prosper. Watch this now. In everything you do. Amen. Everything you do shall prosper. Not just the pastors, not just the, the apostles, not just the, the people in full-time ministry. This isn't for just us. It's for you and whatever you do. So whether you're pumping ice cream at Dairy Queen or mowing grass or building buildings or painting a wall, whatever you do in life, it's God's will to prosper you. To get His hand of blessing on your business. Amen. That's what that talks about. As we what? As we carefully follow the terms of the covenant. Again, you got to walk in obedience. you got to do what God tells you to do. And if you'll do what God tells you to do, guess what? You'll prosper in everything you do. You know what? The older I get and the farther along I get in my faith, here's really what it comes down to. Let me, let me show you a secret. This is going to clear up some stuff. The older I become and the deeper I get in God, it really comes down to this. Simple 
obedience. Just obey. I, when I get in trouble and when my life gets messed up and, and starts walking, I can go right back to an act, a thought, a word of disobedience. That's all it is. If we obey God, if we just do what He says to do, it's like the red carpet was rolled out in our lives. It's when we don't obey. It's when we think we're smarter than God. It's when we think, well, I'll do it my way. The, the, the wheels start falling off the, off the wagon, so to speak. The old way, it's really just as I woke up today and I said, you know, I pray and everything like that. And I said, God, please help me obey you. I need your help. Just help me. And I said, I said just, I want to joyfully obey you. I don't want to just obey you to obey you because God's not a, a taskmaster, amen. He's a loving father. And I, as a child, want to joyfully obey. When he tells me to do something, I joyfully do it. When he tells me not to do something, I joyfully don't do it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It really is that. It's just that simple. I wish it was more complex. But look at this in, in your life. Just look back at your life. However many years you've lived. The times you have troubles when you disobey. What does the Bible call disobedience? Sin. What were the times that God blessed you and poured out his, his hand of favor on you? It was when you were walking in obedience. Amen? Joyful obedience. Joyful obedience. What you got? I just shared five things. You got more than this, by the way. I just gave one another time. You have the promises of God. You got the presence of God. You have the power of God. You've got the protection of God. And you have what? You have the prosperity of God. The blessing of God is on your life when you follow Jesus. That's, that's the thing. When you follow Jesus. Now there might be, I don't know, all of you, but there might be one person in life that does know more. It would be, it would be wrong of you not to give you that opportunity to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Because none of this stuff that I've been preaching about tonight is yours. Not one of them. It's only when you come to the Lord that, that you have access to it. It's only when, when you become a child of the living God that you inherit the covenant of God. You can't do it. You can't do it. Um, so I want to pray. I want to pray, number one, for salvation. If you're here tonight and you don't know what, I want to pray for, for you to receive Jesus so that you can have these things, these five, these five blessings of God. And possess them and walk in them. And then uh, the praise team is going to come up and lead us uh, in, in some songs. And then here's what we want to do. We want to open up these altars. And if you have a need tonight, if you have a need tonight, whatever that need is, I want you to just come up here and I would love to pray with you and to take authority and dominion over that situation, whatever that is, and to see God's power and presence touch your life. Amen. So let's pray. Would you all bow your heads with me? If there's one person here tonight, I don't know who you might be. Maybe there's two or three. 